<laughs> Whew, a little tough right here. <laughs> oh, we're close. Yeah, close. <laughs> Love that. Ah, it's gonna be a beautiful sunrise here. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that. If that's not majestic, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love this, uh, the dark paint job on the uh, Esteem. They did such a nice job picking these colors out and this, this theme out and I think it fits in you know, especially here. You know what, this needs to be a, this needs to be a cover photo. Get out of my shot, you rascal. Yeah. There we go, that's about right. Ooh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Ooh, it's crispy out here. I think it's 28 or 29 degrees. Today's video is gonna be a POV. A lot of people are afraid to drive a motorhome or trailer through a city, but that's kind of where we drive our motorhome uh, most frequently. And so uh, we've never had problems. Um, although the one time coming into Seattle, I did hit a cone when we first got, when we first got the rig, so. <laughs> Uh, but it's kind of unavoidable actually. The comb was out in the road a little too far and I, I shouldn't have trusted it, but I did. We're gonna wait a few hours, wait for the propane station to open up. We're gonna refill propane, refill gas, do a little driving, and then uh, pick up Emma at the end of her day. And uh, you can see, you know, basically how we, uh, how we drive. Now today I'm using a GoPro, whereas in the last how to drive a motorhome series, I was using an iPhone uh, on a tripod or on my head and the head mount was just kind of awkward. So we're going to try this bad boy here, see how that goes. But let's just enjoy this, this be these beautiful colors and I hope it's picking up right in the, in the GoPro. I know that moon is not, but that is, that's a beautiful, I highly doubt this is going to pick up this beautiful bird formation up here. They're going in a big circle pattern. Look at that. Wow. 
incredible. Wow, that's so cool. I don't know if they're just grouping everybody, making sure that everybody's out of the nest and ready to ready to fly, but isn't that uh, isn't that amazing? <laughs> I'm sure there's a a couple birders on this channel that will will tell me what's really going on with these this massive flock. Oh, I did not see this little guy right here. Is there a nest of these guys? Oh, there is, isn't there? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I didn't. Well, isn't that cool? I didn't know that they nested here. Kind of like, uh, kind of like burrowing owls in a way. I thought those were just leaves. That's interesting camouflage. Let's take a look. Where's our propane at? Uh, looks like almost on empty. But we've been lower. Let's go ahead and refill that. Just a couple of quick things. Obviously, it's a lot brighter out here. Uh, that's awesome. Now, I was, I was watching some of this footage back, and I noticed I was on the wide angle lens. And so when I turned and I, I kind of tilted my head, uh, it didn't it didn't quite look right. It was a little uh, a little, little jarring. So I've switched this to the linear plus horizon lock. So hopefully you still get to see, you know, the dashboard and all that good stuff. Uh, the other thing is, is right now we've got plenty of sun out there. And so we're only getting right now about 96 watts. Uh, but we're also tilted away. So one of the cool things is that you can actually watch here. Uh, you can actually watch as, uh, as you tilt the panels and, and that goes up. So check this out. I'll also see if I can get a good example of the, uh, the turn radius. And now we're at, looks like 99 watts, 100 watts. So tilt uh, really makes a big difference. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crank this all the way to the left and let's see if we can see how far it uh, gets us. You can see the turn radius is not that good. Uh, but it's just enough. Yeah, we're at 108 watts, 103, yeah. It's kind of funny watching the watching the chart while while you drive around. I'll plug my phone in. It's about, uh, about ready to die. So we are at just over a quarter tank of fuel right now. We're running that generator a little bit. So let's go ahead. We're going to get fuel, and then we're going to get propane. And then we also need to pick up a little oh, squeaky brakes, a package from uh, an Amazon locker, which is uh, kind of my favorite way to get packages. So obviously you can have packages delivered to family, but if you've got an Amazon locker near you and that's not available everywhere, uh, but it is a nice uh, convenient feature. God, what a beautiful day. Of course, Washington wants us to return. So it makes sure that it's prettiest just before we leave and we'll be uh, we'll be heading out and and uh, taking 90 across to start our journey towards uh, Nevada there so that'll be great yeah, hopefully this is picking everything up the way that I wanted to there's a, there's a lot of gopher holes over here in that baseball field <laughs> oh hey this is kind of a uh, kind of interesting I doubt you can see it uh, but that the uh, the little trailer that looks like a tiny house right over there a little tiny cabin on a, a small like Home Depot trailer now I do try to avoid any of these like lower hanging branches and such but sometimes they're unavoidable uh, I haven't noticed any scratches on the solar panels so oh it's a cold morning while we're waiting here, let's see, uh, what is the temperature? It's 29 degrees, 29 degrees. Woo, that's crisp. And I know a lot of you guys, I was talking to Emma actually about this and uh, basically because she's from Michigan and I'm like, well, aren't you used to this? And she goes, no, you just, you adapt, right? So you adapt your clothing, you adapt your, you know, your expectations and that's the hardest part, right? If you expect it to be cold and you're like, it's gonna be fine, uh, and, you, you, and it feels a little warmer than the coldest you felt recently. That helps a lot, so that's kind of cool. So I don't feel so bad. Uh, I know some of you guys are in the negatives, temperature-wise. 
Oh well. So here's something that actually made me feel like a little bit of a doofus. Um, I had actually scheduled off the 14th through the uh, essentially January 1st uh, because I have a ton of paid time off. Oh, there's a van right there. It's a good looking, good looking van. And uh, <laughs> I just totally forgot because I was, I was thinking like I took off like next week and the week after. Uh, no, I took off like the full 14 actual work days and I feel like a real doofus. So that's fun. I worked days that I had scheduled off. <laughs> I guess I just, I'm just that dedicated to my job. So awesome. Uh, we have some squeaky brakes on this, but they, uh, I took a look at the pads and the, the discs and I think they're, I mean, I'm not seeing anything obvious. Of course, it's kind of tough to tell w without taking the wheel itself off, but um, that's, uh, that's uh, something. Let's see if our Jayco friend is here. Ooh, there's that squeakiness. It's not pulsating or anything, so that's good. And I noticed that if I, uh, if I break a little harder it seems to it seems to chill out significantly. Oh, no Jayco motorhome here. Huh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm sure I'm gonna look like a real uh, <laughs> a real winner standing at a gas pump with a GoPro on my head, but I I do it for you guys. I know a lot of folks have a lot of rules around gas pumps, uh, but if I'm honest, you know, obviously you kind of got to know your rig and I, I don't know that I would take a fifth wheel through like the middle section, but if you're slow and deliberate and uh, you know, all that good stuff, it's uh, we're just over 32 and a half feet here, you know, not including the, the bikes. So you you got a little tail swing, but you can figure it out. It's it's not too tough. Just be be slow, deliberate. Watch your your corners and such. All right. And this is this is an instance where you really have to make a U turn, and this is just going to show how bad our turn radius really is here. <laughs> Check this out. So I'm going to actually swing wide. And I think we're still got it cranked over. All right. No. Okay. We don't have to. We don't have to back up. That's good. All right. And then we got this. What are you doing? Okay. All okay, right. We're doing that, huh? So there's a FedEx truck. Sounds like we all have the same idea. There's actually an exit. Uh, like these cars can either take on a left and exit that way or this lane and maybe even that you can you can actually kind of go around and, and straight out here so I prefer this just because it's a little less hassle uh, doesn't mean you couldn't use one of those lanes this one's just easier so this gentleman in front of us seems a little confused um, I think a lot of people don't realize that like Costco for example has the extendable gas pumps here so you can actually reach around the vehicle. You don't have to, you know, you don't actually have to be on the right side and whatnot. Yeah, I'm very curious how this footage is because my head is really going left and right and, and <laughs> all that. So I'm very curious how this is. And uh, if if uh, any of this footage makes you sick, I'm very, uh, I would apologize, but that's just the nature of the POV uh, view. So I, I, <laughs> I don't blame you for turning it off, but this doesn't really bother me. My, you know, what I'm watching personally, it's funny, I, I actually found that caffeine makes that significantly worse, that uh, motion sickness sort of deal and your equilibrium being off. Uh, caffeine is terrible for that. Uh, alcohol is also pretty bad for seasickness and in your equilibrium balance, obviously. Uh, but even a little bit of alcohol can really throw things off for folks. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, especially when they're on a, they're on a ship. So these stretch back far enough, but I'm going to, just so that nobody crowds me 
and I have options, I am going to pull up so that the gas tank is here, that the front of the rig is up at that one. Um, that might sound like a jerk move, but uh, I'd rather have options. And I don't think that, I mean, if that really bothers folks, then I don't know what to tell you. Grab our trash out of here. Okay. Three fifty nine. So yeah, a lot of people don't take into account this tail swing here, um, and so as you as you turn out, you're gonna want to just slowly, slowly turn out so that you're gaining a little bit of distance. Because I mean, granted, we got a cement barrier here, but yeah, that would be a bad day. Here's another thing that's kind of interesting is that even though a lot, we've got a lot of shade over here, apparently we've got a clear enough view uh, of those solar panels to the sun. We're getting 107 watts right now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but 102 watts. It's kind of surprising, right? All right, that's good. There we are. 34.445 gallons, 123.97. Good even number. That hurts. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and park. Run in real quick for something, and then we'll go get propane. Yeah, so just, if you turn out, as you can see, you know, I get closer and closer and closer as I turn the wheel right. Just watch that, that's all that is. Um, a little common sense. When it comes to parking, by the way, kind of two options, right? You can you can go sideways or you can go through. Now I'm gonna go ahead, and again with this turn radius, not great. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull through. Uh, I gotta show you guys, this is probably the only thing I'm going to miss about, about this rig, is we are uh, just perfectly perfectly in these lines when I'm going to take up four spots again seems like a jerk move but I want to have options and I don't want to be boxed in and I don't want to hit anybody right so check out how perfect this is so here I'm within these lines I could probably pull forward a little bit normally I would but perfectly here right if I walk back here perfectly here <laughs> look at that so when uh we're 32.6 uh, i want to say it's at the bumper bumper to bumper but uh 32.6 so the new rig is going to be 38.9 so it's going to be out to here somewhere i think we found it's like right around like here uh plus the bikes so we won't be able to do this specific move with the uh with the the next with the holiday rambler but uh that doesn't that doesn't mean we're not going to be able to go places right we'll just you know have to take up a corner spot now the one thing i would say about this as well if you're going to take up right so we take about four spots what i would do is uh don't go all the way to the wall unless you're like backing in and going sideways because you want to make sure that when you turn the wheels you still have an exit option right so if somebody if we go one, two, three, four, I'm facing that wall and someone comes right here, that's gonna, that's gonna really suck. So I won't be able to get out. Um, yeah, I would avoid that if I, <laughs> if possible, but, but I'll be right back and then we'll go get propane. Alrighty, and through the magic of editing, I now have a lemonade and, <laughs> and we're getting 123 watts of solar. Um, now for an exit strategy out of this weird parking lot, because you have to take a left and then an immediate right, and that's a very tight turn. Um, and I've done it before, but I know that I have to back out and I'm not doing all that. The, the idea is the less backing up, the better. Just try to keep a, uh, try to limit your liability here, of course. 
And let's take an easier route. Gotten really good. It's very rare that I ever curb it, that rear wheel. It happens, it's gonna happen, but it's not a big deal. No damage or anything like that. And so the option of going through all this crap or just taking a right here and just going around. There is nothing that uh, infuriates me more though than um, especially RVers that are like in rentals and they will uh, park as close to the front door as possible. That's just, that's just ridiculous. You're in a big vehicle. Honestly, we could all use the steps, so park as far out as you can. Stop, uh, stop being lazy. Uh, I think I've already mentioned this, but I do try to kind of hug the outside of the lane on most turns, just because you give yourself a little more space, but it's not like you need to like semi truck, track or trailer kind of thing where you actually have to cut over a lane. And we've all gone to this propane place together in the past, so it's right around the corner. Man, we are really getting a lot more solar today. 150 watts here. Look at this. They're pretty good numbers. Oh, got up to 100 and what's our peak here today? What's our peak history today? 184 watts was our peak. That's really nice. So this one's fun because it's a it's a strange strange way we have to enter here because you have to back up. So let me uh, let me see if I can explain some of the some of the thinking that goes on in here. All right, here's central welding supply. So I'll turn my signal on. Nobody's in my way. And then I'm going to actually turn the four ways on so these cars behind us can go by. Go. Nope, they can't go. And I used to feel very self-conscious about this, but um, not anymore. Oh, let this guy go. Then we're gonna back up right in there. All right, so position that rear wheel that you can pivot around it. And honestly, this just kind of sucks. This isn't gonna be too bad. Not too bad. Nobody's behind us. Watch that dude coming up. Okie dokie. And then, yeah, just keep, a, keep an eye on your mirror and your backup camera. You don't want somebody kind of coming out behind you. Like a dingus. And get hit or say it's your fault. I'm nice and cozy with this. You know what? I'm gonna actually pull forward and give me some more space over here because I can do that. Yeah, there we go. There we are. Boom, perfect. All right. Easy as can be. So, but let's go ahead and pick up the package from Safe. That's from Safeway. We have one package there right now, and there should be another one later. So, we'll pick up at least one here. I'm actually really excited for the Holiday Rambler. We'll be so much higher up, so much higher. I think. I think that'll make a big difference in visibility. Because uh, with something, well, so with a rig like this. I, all the visibility you can get is even better. The only thing I noticed is that, that I already mentioned this if you watch the boundary view video, which I would suggest you go back and take a look at if you haven't already. It's a longer video, but you know, put it on two times speed maybe. Uh, but I think it's kind of interesting so you guys can get a perspective of like what we're, uh, what we're looking at when we talk about like materials and touching things and, and you know, all that good stuff. One thing I noticed though is that that window comes out to here. So I'm curious, instead of being way back, you know, way back here. So I'm curious how that goes uh, in person. I mean, I've heard nobody complain about it. And I know that with their mirrors, they're a little farther forward, I believe. So 
Hopefully that's not too big of a deal. <laughs> look at this, look at the leaves. <laughs> oh, we'll give them a break here. You'll see if I uh, if I brake really hard, it'll actually clear whatever's on the on the brakes temporarily. It seems helps out a lot when it comes to like winter driving, especially in a big rig like an RV or even a you know a trailer. Uh, I really would suggest that you brake before the turn and then kind of coast through or gently uh, apply the brakes just so that you're not potentially hitting any ice, even with one of the wheels and losing traction, uh, and you lose your your turn there. I, I That will slow you down a little bit, of course, but I think I would rather be a little too slow than a little too fast in a motorhome, right? But like here, for example, I'm gonna speed up, slow down, and then look through your turn, obviously. There you go. Oh, yeah, it's a nice day. This is a beautiful day out. Oh! Oh! Look at that! Got a got a same bike as as Emma has, a Rad Runner Plus. I'll be cruising around on that a little bit in Quartzite, just because hers is on the back rack, so. I'm very excited about that. I can I cannot wait to go ride our e-bikes again. My hands and feet, oh, they just cannot handle the cold and, and it gets pretty chilly on the e-bikes. So we'll have to figure out something because we have, you know, the, the, the wind muff cover things that uh, they're neoprene that you slide your hands into kind of like a motorcyclist would have. But we don't have that for feet. So if we have that for feet, I think that'll that'll really help because my feet just get, you know, numb. A lot of pe people's feet will go numb. Mine just go straight painful. It's just it's just straight pain. It just hurts. They never go numb. I wish they'd go numb. <laughs> yeah. This is a very annoying uh, intersection here because it's it's not necessarily apparent back there that this is a turn only lane, uh, or at least it's easy to miss if nothing else. So everybody kind of cuts in front of you. All right. I like to, again, hug the, uh, the, the left side of the lane. You just never know if any of these poles are a little too far over. I get, I get a little paranoid with it. And I'm also very curious because our, our rig is like <laughs> crooked right now. I'm curious how this looks in the in the footage. I'll be seeing this for the first time, this perspective, uh, you know, once editing it. So very excited. I, I like I like that a little bit, right? I like to be kind of predictable. Like I like at least I get a good shot, right? I know I'm getting a good shot, uh, but I also like to be surprised at how fun the shot is as well. Ah, no brake squeakiness. I'm gonna reset the fuel economy down here. City driving gets us around 7.8 miles per gallon. Woo, boy, you are close, my man. Oh, doggies. I don't know if you guys saw that. That dude was close. Another reason to hug the left part of the lane. <laughs> Sheesh. City driving, am I right? <laughs> He didn't touch us though, so we're fine. I do try to avoid some of the like shorter, more narrow roads where you kind of have to twist through. There's just no reason to go down those roads. But that's okay. It really is just like driving a car, in my opinion. It's just a long car. That's all it is. I mean, you have the same exact factors for the most part, right? 
uh, in a vehicle, in any vehicle, you know, it's just, you have a certain height, you have a certain length, you have a certain turn radius, you have a certain, uh, you know, overall clearances, right? In places that you can and cannot park. Just, uh, you're just on the bigger end of that. Also 76 out here. Credit is 434 for gasoline, 539 for diesel. That breaks my heart. Oh, that, that's terrible. I think I've already answered this question, but somebody had actually asked on one of the videos, which lane do you pick? And for freeways, I will pick the farthest outside lane, unless there's a lot of exits and uh, merging traffic, and then I just get over one as long as, you know, depending on the freeway, but I just get over one usually and then move over when uh, there are less exits. When I'm in a city like this, and especially this is a five-way kind of highway type deal, I don't know if this is officially a highway, but I like to be in this middle lane here, uh, or you know the number two lane right from the edge. <sighs> Only because there are people that are stop and go over here, and then generally speaking, people really shouldn't be. Pa if I'm going the right speed limit, which I usually do, uh, you know, up to 50. I, I like to cruise at 55 on the freeway, but on the the regular back. You know, regular streets. I like to go the actual speed limit. Uh, there's no no reason people should be passing me on the right, but I won't stop them. Uh, but less stop and go means your fuel economy is better. Uh, it also means you're potentially safer. I hope that helps. Ooh, it smells like propane still in here. It does. in the lanes very well no problems with that no problems with that um, folks still ask because I, I think there's just no way for people to watch all of our videos they ask you know what suspension upgrades we should they should get uh, what do we recommend and steering stabilizer 1000% uh, we have the safety plus but if you can get one that's a little bit more uh, rigid that's probably even better though uh, you know I'm not an engineer but Safety Plus Silver is really good. Uh, the Sumo Springs in the front are amazing. And we didn't touch the back, but I would be willing to bet that the, the Sumo Springs in the back would also be a huge benefit. We did the Hellwig's Sway Bar in the front. I uh, would not recommend it personally. I just, I, the one that came from Ford was, it was kind of dinky. Like it was a little bit thinner, but honestly I didn't notice as much of a difference as we did with the Sumo Springs and all that. Um, so to each their own, right? I mean, if you've got the money to spend and you're installing it yourself or you have the money for somebody else to install it, fine, whatever. If you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. But personally, the Weld Tech, uh, I think there's a two and a four inch and a six inch lift. I would do a four inch lift on this with the Weld Tech designs, uh, all just all around suspension kit. Money well spent, I'd say. It is seven grand though. So again, it's one of those things, if you have the money, there you go. If you don't, and if you will not have the money in the future, you know, there you, know, there you are. But that WellTech kit, I have seen, I mean, they, they, they really give you good video proof. The before driving characteristics, after how they install, what they install. They have an amazing YouTube channel. Uh, they do great work. Um, I, I wanna say it's like seven grand for the model that I would have chosen. Um, and honestly, you'll save your steps because yeah, we're wrecked. <laughs> Our steps are just wrecked. So, um, yeah, again, to each their own, but that's definitely what I would choose. Yeah. Oh, you can see the, the Olympic mountains out here. Woo. She's a beauty. Well, you guys might not be able to in that, 
lens there, but oh, that is what a beautiful day. There's uh, the sea mist down low and the beautiful mountains. Beautiful, beautiful mountains poking up there. Oh, what a delight. That is gorgeous. It's a beautiful day, guys. Beautiful day. What do you guys think about the Nutcracker also? I, um, I'm not a fan of the Nutcracker. I'm not a fan of plays in the theater, etc. Uh, myself, but I guess, I mean, I, I, I can almost see the appeal, right? Because that is kind of amazing that people can remember their lines. That's a real, I mean, that's an art. That is for sure an art, but uh, yeah, not for me, I'd say. Okay. I've seen a lot of these Rivian trucks out here, by the way, these uh, electric trucks. Not a fan of them myself. I like the idea of an electric truck, but in practicality, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, this is a packed parking lot. Oh. Uh, we just kissed a tree branch there. Lightly. Oh, wow. This is the most packed I've seen this parking lot. Holy cow. No, I bet you we can find a spot right out here. Yeah. Um, boy, oh boy. Okay, let this Prius go. They're not gonna go. Okay. All right, where's the exit? The exit's right there. Let's go ahead and just point towards the exit. We're not gonna be here long at all. So there's still snow from, uh, what is it, more than two weeks ago? Ah. If we were gonna be here a while, I would say this is a jerk move. Always lock it up. That'll be another change. Uh, the single door versus having three doors right now. And uh, pros and cons, I guess. Uh, it does mean that if we put the push button, you know, we might do like a, a numbered system on our lock. Uh, you know, theoretically, that will, uh, that'll be pretty nice, right? Less chance of locking yourself out, but uh, I don't know. It hasn't really seemed very, like something that we've really needed to do since we still have the key fob and we can always uh, use that for the actual Ford doors. But. So if you guys haven't seen this before, uh, in the Amazon app here, you can actually, uh, you can go to orders, right? And so we have a pickup location here. Uh, they call this like Mendelin or something like that, but they all have funny names. Uh, but we can go to, looks like Delivered Tuesday. And then we have a pickup code, which is great. Yeah, it says, M yeah, Medellin at Safeway. So, this is nice. We've got a pickup code here. Sometimes you can just scan it. There we go. And then she's available. Isn't that convenient? And then, And then this guy is just a little, uh, a little, a little, it's actually made out of aluminum uh, so that we can convert uh, the, the tw you know, the, the twist on thing to just one of the sliding bits for this. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Because right now, yeah, right now, like our, the tripod, you have to use one of these little, little deals here. It'll make the tripod or whatever we attach this to, probably the tripod. It'll make it so that it'll accept like that. And then you can, you can pop them out. It's kind of a nice thing. Sheesh, honestly, this is a, this is a ridiculous complaint, but uh, Emma's at work right now. Last day before, you know, school break. But honestly, if I'm not working, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, at least here in Washington, I don't know what to do. Uh, there's a there's a Petco down here and, and uh, I was hanging out there for the day and soaking up some solar. 
Actually, I should probably go left here. Whoops. All right. Uh, but then we got kicked out of there because they don't want our V's there. And oh, okay, whatever. Um, whoop, turning. I'm going to turn to the outside lane. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, but there is a Costco parking lot down here somewhere. So maybe we'll go there for the next few hours. But yeah, I wish we could we could park somewhere and go right around. But it's not at 30 degrees. No, sir. Okay. One other thing, by the way, if you're going to turn right uh, like this, just watch your tail swing because you, especially if you have a bike rack or something like that, um, you can't swing out as wide, but also you could very well turn and as you pivot around the corner, smack your uh, your bike rack or the, the, the edge of your bumper or something like that on uh, the, somebody's, <laughs> the side of somebody's car. You don't want that. That'd be a bad day. Out a little farther, then turn. Oh man, I cannot wait to do some comparisons um, once we get that the new Holiday Rambler. It'll be a quick swap and we're gonna get the heck out of there so we can head back to Washington. But I'm very, very excited to see how that, that rig performs. Woo, I'm excited. I know a lot of you guys are excited as well which is awesome i think that's that's really awesome um <laughs> i love to see it it's interesting there's a costco and that you got your, your cannabis right across this like right in the corner back here that's uh that's something oh look at that you know what oh yeah yeah we can get we can soak up the sun over here let's go this way and if we you know right here would be ideal right there Yes, and it's tilted towards the sun. Let's see if I can see if I can turn around. That car corral there is in our way. Oh, this is going to be perfect, and it'll help dry out the uh, the cabin here. Uh, watch your uh, backup cameras. We can uh, we can go over a little bit here. Sam, go lay down. There we are. There we are. Whew. The kangaroo movers. What a funny, what a funny name. Look at this. <laughs> See, this one shadow from this tree can uh, really wreak havoc on your, your solar gathering here. But look at this. Let's see what we've got. Let's see, what do we go? We will go Victron Connect 232 watts, which doesn't sound like a whole lot because it's not. 236, 238. Oh, that's lovely. Hold on. 240, 240, 239. We've hit the peak, haven't we? Yep. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at the rig outside and see what our conditions are. the sun naturally you know I don't know that because uh, the sun's pretty low in the horizon there I don't know that we're gonna get much better solar but uh, if we were to go sideways it wouldn't be much better because it might hit more of these panels but less of the other so I think that's about optimal and at least we're getting all the sun right in that window there which is which is pretty dang good that's awesome look at Sam is so serious. I don't know what it is, but they just, they love coming forward when we stop. Time to get out or something. Sam has been getting a, a little stress while driving and I, I, it's way worse in this rig than it was like in the Jeep or the truck. She, she really settled down in the truck. Uh, that Ram pickup was fantastic. Uh, and towing the Airstream, it was so balanced. It was just, it was just wonderful. But here, she's really been stressed out, really stressed out. So I really hope that improves soon with the uh, the new rig. But we'll see, we'll see. Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Hopefully, this gives you a pretty good idea of what it's like to drive this big rig, uh, what it's like to park it, 
kind of some of the considerations, whether or not you'll fit on a road, you know, all that good stuff. So leave it all down below in the comments and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.